Hey guys, Mr. Smith back here. Had a just a technical issue. Uh, so we're back continuing the lesson on measuring the mass of an electron. And so what we got at this point was um, a way to find the mass of any charged particle. If you knew the uh, charge of it, the magnetic field strength, the radius of the curved motion, and the potential difference between the two parallel plates um, uh, of your apparatus. And so um, we're going to do just one example of applying uh, some of uh, his techniques. We're not necessarily going to use uh, this derived equation here, um, but um, we're going to do an example of finding the mass of a, a chlorine ion. So yeah, let's get started. So a couple things to talk about here. We have a chlorine 35 ion with a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So it's positive, which means we've lost an electron. Um, so this uh, has a positive charge. Now, I want to actually talk more about that. Just to explain why I do certain things in our solution. So we have this charge accelerated into a mass spectrometer. So that's the device that JJ Thompson used through a potential difference of um, uh, 2.5 times 10 to the two volts. So we imagine this is the mass spectrometer. We want to we want to fire the charged particle in there, right? So what speed does it enter with? Well, we have our cathode ray tube, our parallel, a second kind of parallel plate, and we have our charged Q. And it's going to go from one end to the other. Now, <clears throat> if our chlorine ion has a charge of positive 1.6 to 10 to the minus 19, and it's going to accelerate to the right in my diagram here, where does the positive charge and the negative charge have to be? So if you said the positive charge has to be on the left here and the negative charge on the right, then you'd be correct. Now, but when we talk about a uh, potential difference, but, and you see here it's 250 volts, that's always, it's always given as a positive, and it's always given as the difference from the negative plate to the positive plate, low potential to high potential. So delta V equals 250 volts. So that's what that means. That's as you go from low to high, but our our particle has a positive charge and it's actually moving from the positive to the negative. So when we do our question here, to make sure the signs work in the math and we don't have to fudge anything. So we're gonna have a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, positive. And we're gonna use a delta V of actually negative 250 volts. And for the reason I explained there, and don't, uh, if that seems a bit confusing, don't worry when I uh, assess you guys on things. I'll, I'll, I won't throw these little curveballs at you, but I wanted to set that up as an explanation why I've got that negative in there. Because if you don't add the negative, uh, you wind up having to just fudge a negative in here somewhere. And I wanted just to be, to show you guys what's going on. So we use uh, that to be negative 250 volts. And with that, we're going to be able to find um, a speed coming out. Now our question says our um, field strength is one Tesla. The, we got the radius of circular motion. And we're asked to find the mass. Now I wanna be really clear. That 250 volts, it's not the same as this voltage um, in, the, in this equation. This voltage is from the field plates. So if I go way back to the original diagram of the mass spectrometer, that delta V is from these plates here. The delta V in our question, we were told this delta V that accelerates the particle. Okay, so if you're wondering why I'm just not using our derivation here, that's because we weren't actually given the field plates, the field plate voltage. Okay, so uh, here's how we're going to set this problem up. So one, we're going to find an expression for the speed entering the 
uh, the mass spectrometer. So the speed leaving the leaving the, the plates in our diagram. So let's do that first. And we've done many of these actually. So we've talked about how the change, the electric potential potential energy lost equals the kinetic energy gained. And so in this question, uh, we have a um, so and change in electric potential energy is minus Q times delta V. That's one half mv squared. And so you can see why I had this sign because Q is positive. And if we didn't have delta V being negative, we would get negative potential, negative kinetic energy, which is weird. So that's why I did that little explanation for you guys, because technically this positive charge is going through, uh, is actually going through a region where it's losing potential. And so it's um, negative 250. Um, actually, usually I like to, uh, I'm actually just going to get an expression for, because we don't know M or we don't know V. So instead of plugging in right now, I'm just going to rearrange. So I have multiplying up the 2, minus 2, Q, delta V, and divided by M, and I will be square rooting that. So let's just tuck that into our back pocket. We're going to come back to that equation later. So I'm going to do a second thing here where we look at the magnetic field. In that magnetic field, we... Um, have uniform circular motion, and it's the magnetic force providing that, which is Q times V times B sine theta, but here we'll say the motion is perpendicular, so QBB, and that equals MV squared over R. These Vs divide out, or at least one factor of the V squared. If I solve for V, I get QRB divided by M. So I have two expressions for the same V. This V is the speed leaving the plates, and then in the magnetic field, that's the speed of the uniform circular motion. And I'm gonna set those two equal to each other. All right, so we have the root of negative two Q delta V over M equals QRB over M. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square both sides. So negative two Q delta V over M equals Q squared, R squared, B squared over M squared. And we got a factor, one factor of M divides out, right? So if I multiply this M up to the left and divide by the Q down to the right and do some canceling, so you notice I have a factor of Q on both sides that can divide out. So I get this expression for M. M equals Q R squared B squared divided by negative two delta V. I think I did all that right, yep. So you'll notice the equation is a little bit different than the one we had before, but that's okay because this was the voltage on the field plates this is the voltage um, between what's accelerating them. So it's just another expression for finding the mass of a charged particle. But in this case, you know the magnetic field and you know the, um, you know the potential uh, between the accelerating plates, I'll just say. I might have some tired, grumpy boys being put down for a nap. So if you do hear some, some, some wailing, don't worry. Nobody's being injured. It's just, it's just nap time. So let's just finish this one off, guys. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. 0 0.0135. Come up very clear. Don't forget to square it. Uh, B is 1, so just do that. Divided by negative 2. And again, because we took care of that, that voltage and talked about why it's negative 250, uh, we now know that um, we can see we're not going to get a negative mass and everything would work out. So if instead I was trying to find the mass of an ion that has a negative charge, 
then we would just reverse the potential and the positive play would be on the other side. All right, let's finish this one off here. Times 0 0.0135 squared. Uh, and that's just divided by 500, I think, right? So about 5.8 times 5.8 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. So that's really neat that we can use this, these mass spectrometers to determine the mass of any charged particle. And all we need to know is the magnetic field strength, either the voltage of the accelerating plates or the voltage of the field plates. And so depending on your situation, either one of those will give you the mass. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it still fascinates me. This is like the seventh or eighth time I've taught this, uh, that it's quite that simple. But probably a hard machine to build, but that's quite that simple to um, to find the mass of a charged particle. And that's the math behind the uh, that's the the physics behind a mass spectrometer and how we find the mass of small charged objects. So that's pretty cool. Um, what's next? So uh, now that we've uh, looked at the magnetic force on a moving charge and did it like an application of that. We're going to find the force on a conductor. So that would be like a wire that has a whole bunch of moving charges moving through it. Um, it's going to exert, uh, it's going to feel a uh, force as well. And so that's what we're going to do next lesson. But until then, hope you guys are staying well. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.